welcome to our youtube channel where i'll create a path of knowledge by bringing lectures closer to you with just a single button click please don't forget to like comment and subscribe to our channel today we are going to talk about con drafting contracts uh, and their pricing methods so we shall start with contract drafting drafting like it's a rough copy of the contract before you, you do a final document so under drafting when you're drafting a contract there are some things you should put in, in into consideration like while drafting your contract one you should be definitive and what we mean by this be specific there must be sufficiently clear definitive promises and terms to bind the parties that offer the contract so under definitive you should be specific use the language someone can understand and the clauses included should be clear and well written so the next thing under contract drafting the basics after being definitive you should remember to be definitive then we have the basics the basics like this one it's like the body of the contract so you must have the exact product or service descriptions the price the delivery time or place the shipping details warranty or customer with special provisions so under basics you should know what you want which product you want you should know its price let's say you, sh you have to make a market research before coming to this to drafting the contract you should have made a market research you know what exactly you want you know the price you know how it's going to be delivered where and when so and the basics are like the what you include in the body of your contract and under basics you should spell out the date of that the date that payments are due you should also make sure that you clear any outstanding invoices after terminating the contract then under the basics that's where you you do all that you make sure you maybe you put a clause if there is a termination who will be who will be the one to 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 pay to pay the other or how much according to who has done the what then under basics you should also reserve your rights or claims in case the other party change ownership or goes into bankruptcy so the basics is like the body what you include in the body you should be knowing it you should do a market research and also while drafting the body you should put those clauses like this this clause of resolving your rights or claims in case the part, other party changes ownership or goes into bankruptcy you should also spell out the date that payments are due then still under basic street you should establish standard clauses those clauses that apply like their standard they they have to be there for example the monetary issues it, clause about the money the price like contract payment who is going to pay it or how much are they going to pay the the contractor yes then if it's a corporation be sure that all crucial documents have a full legal name then the third thing under contract drafting you confirm the contract in writing remember in drafting we are writing a sketch of what you want to include in your final document so the third thing is to write the final document confirm the writing in the confirm the contract in writing so you write the final document after spelling out everything you need both parties have agreed i need this this they have agreed so you write the contract you you, you do you write the final copy of the contract about, let's talk about the pricing methods of contracts if a contract is to exist there must be an agreement on price with free consent of the contracting parties both parties are said consent when they agree upon the same price of the contract so that self-explanatory contract can't exist without a price because nothing is free of charge 
So let's look at the different pricing methods. We have competitive pricing method. We have negotiated pricing method. We have the turnkey. We have the multiple management pricing method. And we have the piecework method. So we shall talk about each of them. Let's start with the competitive pricing method. Here, the contract is paid for the work performed under the contract. So you're paid for what you've done. If, if you do half, you'll be paid for that half. And here, the contract receives a percentage plus or minus on saving or excess against the target value. So under competitive pricing method, the contract is paid for the work performed under the contract. But in competitive pricing, okay, during the, the contract drafting, they estimate a specific value to be used. So the contractor has to work within that limit. Maybe I say, they say they are using two billion. So while you're doing your work, you should work within the limit of two billion. So let's talk about the advantages. The contractor is encouraged to use his skill and experience in keeping the cost as low as possible. Remember, I told you here the, a, a specific target value is put for for the whole project. So the contract has to work within the limit. So one of the advantages is that the contractor is encouraged to use his skill and experience in keeping the, the cost as low as possible so that it doesn't exceed the limit because if you exceed the limit, it's a penalty on you, you will pay for it, you, that's like a loss on you. Then another advantage, it's profitable to both the contractor and the owner since there's a limit so you, you know where you're working within. The, the owner will know how, how much to pay and the contractor also knows how how much to to incur so that it doesn't exceed the limit. Then the disadvantages we, ha we, we have, the contractor may show higher cost of project and thus may gain more amount covering the penalty for excess expenditure. Remember I told you they set a target value for, to be used in the project so if the contractor exceeds it, the penalty is his to cover. Another contracting method we have negotiated pricing method. So here, when a contract is awarded by negotiation, it's known as a negotiated contract. Here, there is no open competition, and the owner carries out negotiations with the selected contractor regarding the price of the contract. So, negotiated pricing method. The price is negotiated between the client and the contractor. So whoever has the uh, the list the list price will be taken. The advantages there are less chances of dispute in a negotiated price contract since you've already because the competition is restricted to a small number of equal ranking contractors and you've negotiated and come up until you're contented with how much you can pay so there are less less chances of dispute since you by the time you agree you've already dap your mind to to that price. The disadvantage we have the contractor can't be the contract can't be awarded for public works due to absence of open competition. In negotiated pricing method there is no open competition. The the client chooses a number of just selected contractors whom to whom he negotiates the price so there is no open competition and this can't be awarded for public work since for public works there has to be there has there has to be competition different contractors compete for the job so that the best one is awarded however in case of emergency or under special circumstances when the time of completion is a major consideration Negotiated contracts for the public works can be given by special laws. Third pricing method, we have the turnkey pricing method. In this system, the owner contemplates a job and can do it on one party for all the jobs or services of the contract. Remember, under contracting methods, we had a design construct contracting method and other types of contracting methods of contracting. So this turnkey pricing method applies in the design construct method, contracting method. Since in the turnkey, 
if a client gets only one supply or one contractor to do the designing, the planning, the, and the preparation of estates. So he employs that method of contracting, which is the design construct method, contracting method. Advantages we have the client transacts a single supplier for both the design and the ex ex execution of the project, which simplifies management since you only have one contractor who does everything, so it's easy to manage them. Then it's also possible to accelerate the project since the work can be even can begin even before the design processes, since it's the same contractor designing. So once he does half of the design, that will the job can start as he continues with the design. Then the client can obtain a definite price for the, of the contract more rapidly. Since you only have one contractor, so he will name his price. He will calculate whatever he has to do, then he will come up with a, an estimate of the price, his, like of how much he's supposed to use for the whole project. Then food disputes are likely to occur, and if they do, such disputes are easy to resolve. Another method of pricing, we have the multiple management pricing method. So here you have different contractors. That's like different contractors and they are priced differently. Here the statement of work for multiple management pricing method describes the scope, nature, complexity and purpose of the services or supplies to be acquired. Uh, appropriate pricing arrangements can be used and the delivery orders may be based on farm fixed price, time and materials, labor hour, or a combination of these arrangements. Some agencies, agencies issue task or delivery orders with different pricing arrangements specifying the clauses that apply to this. So here, basically, and about the price management pricing method, they are just different, different contractors being priced differently. Ah, yes. For example, let me first read this. When combining various types of pricing arrangements, agencies must ensure that, that ensure the contractors accounting system is adequate for supplying the pricing method. So on the multiple management pricing method, maybe the supplier of concrete, he has the contractor who is supposed to supply concrete is priced, has his own pricing, maybe pricing method, then the contractor supposed to to do the job. Maybe the construction also has his own different pricing method, then maybe you have another contractor also with their own pricing method. That's what they mean by multiple management pricing method. You have different different contractors being priced in using different pricing methods. Hope that's clear. Then the, the last method, pricing method, we have the piecework pricing method. So here, piecework, a rate is agreed upon with reference to the total quantity of work to be done within a given period. So here, it's according to the piece, like the piece of work, then you estimate how much you want. A rate is agreed upon with reference to the total quantity of work to be done within a given period. Maybe, let's say it's a garden. A rate, they will look at how many acres, then a rate upon upon reference with a total quantity of work is done. To be done is agreed upon within a given period. So if if maybe one it's a piece of land the weeding is supposed to take place, they will look at the piece of work, how big is it and how much time do you want us to, to do the job like to complete the the digging then a rate will be agreed upon according to that. How big the land is and how much time do you want us to, to take to complete the work, the digging. And the piecework detailed specification and the total cost of the whole work to be done and mentioned.
the contract can be terminated and at any time. Under peace work pricing method, the contract can be terminated at any time. Hmm? Maybe you've just started and the, the client says you're not doing a good job. He can't stop you from there. He pays you for that piece of work you've done. Then he gets another one. So advantages of the piece work pricing method, we have urgent small works are done without inviting tenants and thus considerable time is saved. This work is mostly done for the small scale works. These like maybe farmers digging small scale things where you just look at the maybe the like a job then you estimate Yes. An advantage is agent small works are done without inviting tenants and thus considerable time is saved. Then we have if a contractor delays to execute the work or uses inferior quality of materials or leaves the work partially done, another contractor may be engaged to complete the work. That's what I was explaining. It's done for small works and peace work peace work pricing methods. So if the, 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 the contractor delays to execute the work, he can, the contract can be terminated and they, they bring in another contractor to finish the work without any problems. Disadvantages, the work being very small, good contractors find little interest in it. So I told you this work is for the small scale jobs or works. So it being very small, good contractors find little interest in it. Then the work has to be entrusted to a petty contractor. The work has to be entrusted to a petty contractor who has little experience and knowledge to carry out the work according to department according to departmental procedures. So for this work it's mostly entrusted to petty contractors. And remember we talked about types of contractors, these petty ones are unskilled with they are very unskilled and they are just to do this small scale works mostly in villages, like in their local areas. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more of our videos. Bye.